In this session, we're going to discuss some of the state-level computer science requirements that schools and districts should be aware of. Now, we're not going to be able to cover everything in this segment, but we're going to cover the issues that come up most often, that we get the most questions about at the agency, uh, and seem to just be a recurring question out in the field. So, uh, obviously, in your different roles, if I hit on something that you still feel that we're doing a poor job communicating, perception is reality. So that's part of what this session is about, is, is trying to share that information out on a broader scale. So just to jump into it, let's, let's go back to the beginning of what started all this. And really that was Act 187 of the 2015 uh, regular session. Uh, and Act 187 established not only the Computer Science Task Force, uh, Computer Science and Public Technology Task Force, let me get the full name in there, uh, but it also set up our legislative requirement for our high schools to offer at least one computer science course. And by high school, we do mean grades 9 through 12. Um, and the code is there, I'm not going to read it, but in short, it's just that schools, high schools must offer one of our approved computer science courses. And as we talked earlier, that accessibility in that first year, or that access to those courses, is what almost quadrupled our enrollment mm -hmm. as a state. Um, so the question naturally comes right after we say there's this mandate that you have to offer a course. Well, what courses meet this mandate? Well, the first two years of the initiative, we had some what we refer to as stopgap courses. We had Essentials of Computer Programming, we used APCSA, uh, Computer Science with Mathematics, and those were really designed in a way that we knew that we had to uh, ramp up teacher professional development, get our systems in place that supported a more systemic uh, K through 12 computer science curriculum. So as of July 1st of 2017, we implemented our new courses. So the Essentials course is no longer a valid course. If you're using it, stop. Uh, actually, nobody should be because I look at those reports all the time. Um, computer Science with Mathematics is no longer a valid course. CSA is, but it no longer counts for Act 187. So let's talk about the courses that do count. We wrote uh, with uh, a whole grid of new high school courses with uh, high school um, computer science people. We brought in outside industry. We brought in university people. Uh, this was really, these courses were really written with a well-rounded group of individuals that looked at not only some national documents, but what do industries in our state really, what are they really looking for within our students? And uh, I, I will say that that this is another example of where Arkansas is re, uh, leading the nation. I can't release the state, but we have been in negotiations with another state that they are actually going to adopt our computer science standards for their state wholesale. Mm. So mm -hmm. that is just a testament to the quality work that our educators and industry leaders uh, did within these courses. So to the courses, to meet Act 187 beginning this school year, a school must offer level one and level two, and each level is a semester now. That's kind of how we decided to divide them up. Our computer science with programming coding emphasis, level one, level two, a mobile application development, level one, level two, a computer science uh, with networking hardware emphasis, uh, level one, level two, of robotics, uh, computer science with information security emphasis, or our college board AP computer science principles. Notice Computer Science A is no longer on that list to meet the Act 187 requirement, and that's honestly because of that accessibility question that, that we brought up earlier. Computer Science A is a great course. Mm -hmm. We consider it to be an advanced course because of the level of computer science content that's within it. Also, if you look at the minimum requirements or the suggestions from College Board, mm -hmm. it really suggests that the student should have math skills comparable to being in Algebra 2 or have completed Algebra 2. So by default, that eliminates 50% of our high school population mm -hmm. uh, almost, uh, because those ninth and 10th graders typically aren't in Algebra 2 yet. Right. So those are our courses that, that currently meet in foreseeable future. Now there will be changes. Uh, we don't look at changing those courses drastically until the, um, the next revision, the next cycle, which these are on a four-year cycle, um, but currently those are the courses. So what do you teach within those courses? Well, regulatory authority in Arkansas allows the State Board of Education to adopt standards. Y'all know that. Yes. We don't prescribe curriculum, though we are going to modify our role slightly in that, and we're going to have some discussions about curriculum, 
moving forward in, in computer science and other STEM areas. So those are some changes. That is a change that our department's already looking at uh, as we move forward, but more information will come out on that later. Let's get back to the standards. The standards are found on our ADE website, and I've shared the link, and I think we're going to show uh, uh, that page. Uh, Every school year, Dr. Gocher, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, I, I hope I'm not because uh, I may have to go back and change this, this presentation, but every school year you sign what I call a statement of attestation, but it's a statement of assurance That's basically, uh, that, that you're putting teachers within the classroom that have the skills to teach the courses, they have the correct licensure, or you follow the alternative learning plan steps, and that they're going to teach the standards for that class. Is That's that correct? correct? That is correct. So, so it's really on the superintendent to, when you sign that piece of paper, it's on y'all saying we're doing this, That's correct? Right. So or there could be a citation, or uh, if we don't, if it's discovered through standards. But yeah, right. That that statement of assurance, and, and we do it every year. Right, and and I don't, you know, and I don't want to turn this conversation negative, but we do have to. We have a responsibility to not uh, commit what I call educational malpractice. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that's that's a big step of it is that the superintendent is informed, and that they're assuring the public, their public, that we're doing what what the state has said is in the best interest of students. Now, I know you, and I know you go well beyond what the minimum of the state requires. So I have no concerns about your <laughs> you. uh, your school and what you do. But you know, if if a superintendent falsifies that information, just like any educator falsifies a a state document, there are there are provisions that that educator can lose their license or be cited in other other manners and that's under our code of ethics um, and our you know and a lot of people ask me nationally mm -hmm. Anthony do you support an assessment in CS a national assessment in CS for students my resounding answer is no I do not I do not want us to get into assessing computer science at a state level uh, and that's now my, my stance may change 10 years down the road, 12 years down the road. But as a nation, as a state, Arkansas is leading and we're still in the infancy stages of, of computer science at the K-12 arena. There's the only thing that we would do by trying to, to implement an assessment at this point is kill the initiative and kill the drive that, mm -hmm. that's behind it. So that's the reason I don't support it this time. It's not that I don't support assessment and, and making sure our students are learning. It's that right now we're going to trust schools. We're going to trust our districts, we're going to trust schools, we're going to trust classroom teachers to do what is right. And uh, that's, that's the reason that I really don't think we need to move to uh, assessment. But that said, there's, there's always, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's always um, the schools that may not do what is appropriate, and that's where we have other mechanisms to, uh, to address those. And, but I don't want to turn this conversation negative, but quick thoughts. No, my, my initial thought is one of the benefits that we have as superintendents and, and teachers and principals as well is making access of our co-ops. Great mm -hmm. conversations happen, mm -hmm. happen at those co-ops. And so I always learn from my superintendent colleagues, we obviously communicate quite a bit, but at our, at our co-ops, at our monthly meetings, that's an opportunity to, again, use the phrase, telling our story. We share, we find out, we, we, we learn from each other. And so I have no problem promoting the Russell School District at the Arch Ford Co-op. And I look forward to hearing Dr. Greg Murray at Conway promoting his school district. We, we, we sharpen each other in that regard. So I think that's important that we, that we communicate well at our co-ops because that's where we, we learn from each other. Agreed. And promotion, you know, that's, uh, I love being able to promote Arkansas as an initiative where I'm talking to other states and honestly. I've been a part of that. that yeah, uh, you have right. been a part of that. But that gives me not only an opportunity to brag on Arkansas, yes. but also learn from other states because they always want to challenge. You know, it was, um, I looked at it as a, um, as a positive. There was an article came out the other day that another state, the, that state commissioner of education, uh, made a statement of how they were they were catching up to Arkansas <laughs> in a national publication that you know in computer science space that that is the kind of statement that that makes me happy and one and the governor. That, that they're looking at Arkansas as, as that right. leader but it also reminds me what's next yeah. you know we got to be looking at what's next and I think that's the same thing as a superintendent you've got competition down the road that mm -hmm. you may lose families if another school starts getting beyond what you're doing so it keeps us on our toes it does 
Well, I was just going to add, I, that's why I value so much the professional development that has been organized and, and sent out through co-ops, STEM centers across the state, mm, uh, through your computer science specialists that, um, you know, I think most educators, administrators are aware of best practice and want to do the best for students in their, in their districts. Um, it, it just we see the same thing with science right now as well when when new standards are coming out it's essential that teachers and administrators alike feel supported as they're developing their understanding these are not standards that you're going to uh, fully comprehend in a single read through it's going to take some conversation i've really found how valuable mm -hmm. that's been as i've been with groups of educators and we've taken the time and created space to look at those standards to look at areas, especially like with the K-8 computer science standards, where they truly can be authentically integrated into our core instruction. Um, and then areas where we need to look for specific resources, tools, strategies that we aren't currently using and how we can grow and develop our program that's gonna help not just increase access for computer science, but it's gonna let raise our level of rigor in our other instruction, our other core curriculum as well. So. I really appreciate the professional development that is being made available and that's continued to be revised around those standards to increase access for our kids. And I'm curious, how can superintendents support teachers in a greater way? One of the things that, that I, I say often is one of the reasons a third of our teachers leave the workforce is because they feel a lack of support and sometimes paperwork is in there depending on the profession. So Carmo, how can I support teachers better in this field? What, what would be a great formula for success? Well, I think what you were saying about the co-ops and what you said about the you know, professional development, with this explosion of computer science, there's a lot of new teachers out there, not necessarily new teachers, but new computer science teachers mm -hmm. like, like myself, and I'm the only one in my district. I'm the only computer science teacher, so I need to go to those things to make contacts, to learn new things. I can't point. go to my next door teacher and say, I just blew up this lesson. What do I, you know, how do I, yeah. I have five minutes, how do I fix it before next class period? Uh -huh. So <clears throat> to for the superintendent or principal, building level principal, whoever, to let the teachers go and get the necessary training and make the necessary connections, I think that's vital at this point with with this many new teachers trying to master this wonderful new and subject. That's, that's a great point because I think unless we know as superintendents, we, we won't make that opportunity, even though we may want to make that opportunity available, I think that's a great point. So we've got, especially taking advantage of the of the opportunities at the co-op. So thank you for that. That's a great point that I wish all of our superintendents could hear. Well, and hopefully they will. Yeah. And, and I, I agree wholeheartedly. Hadn't, hadn't really thought about it in that context, but you're right. As a math teacher, at least I had the math teacher across right. the hallway. Um, we have the CS list serve, but obviously that's a little bit more cumbersome than just walking across the hallway. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, great point, Karma. So let's get back to the requirements um, and let's talk a little bit more about what is actually required and what's not required. So legislative and regulatory mandate for schools does not require any courses beyond the Act 187. Now, I said it doesn't require. I didn't say that it doesn't mean schools shouldn't or can't offer more. In fact, I hope schools offer an entire mm -hmm. pathway of courses, which we'll get into more in a little bit. Um, schools are, we encourage schools to offer a variety of CS courses um, uh, and a pathway of courses for a variety of reasons. We'll talk about the flex credit options. There are options for multiple flex credits under CS. Uh, it can be used toward a numerous uh, Arkansas career education recognized completer pathways. Uh, it provides students, I mean, and I mean this one probably should have been top on the list, but it provides students with additional opportunities to expand their knowledge in computer science. Uh, we don't want just that cursory knowledge, uh, that introductory knowledge. Uh, and most recently, and, and we're not going to get too in depth with this, but it will provide schools with additional opportunities to properly demonstrate uh, school quality and student success under our recently approved yeah. ESSA plan. which. Uh, you know, we don't want schools to start doing things just to get ESSA points, but it's there. And, and it's, it's obviously important or it wouldn't have been written into the ESSA plan. So we want schools that, we want them to do the right things and then they get rewarded for doing the right things, Agreed. not do things because they get rewarded. Does that you bet. make sense? 
So um, we're going to stop there, and here in a second we'll come back and we will discuss teacher licensure requirements.